We're going to Washington tomorrow. Because, um, <clears throat> a few days ago we got a call from one Michael Mashad asking us if we could come represent Channel Awesome and go. Come, come represent Channel Awesome on the hill. I, I feel like I kind of fall in between these. I know so many people that are like, why bother? The system is inherently corrupt. Um, you know, you don't really have a voice. You only have the illusion of a voice. I try not to be as cynical as that, but there is one thing that genuinely concerns me, and that is lobby groups. Google is a much more powerful company, but they don't have the lobby groups in place, maybe because they're new, or maybe because they don't want to be evil, although, you know, if you wanted to be a little evil, you know, for the rest of us, Google, we yeah. appreciate it. Google, we appreciate that you're mostly not evil overlords <laughs> that you could be, but you could stand to be a little more <laughs> evil and just get a damn lobbyist, or... 40,000. Yeah. Making cookies for the boys. Oh, shit. Okay, now the gingerbread cookies are burned. Fuck. So, what, what are you working on again? I'm working on the T-Pain video. Uh, I assume by the time anyone watches this, I'll be done with it. <laughs> it's a... Uh, T-Pain, 5 o'clock, and I gotta get this done tonight, and I'm working on like the last little bits of it, and this thing did not just freeze on me again. Okay, thank God. So what do you do for a living? I review uh, popular songs on the charts, and they, uh, I make videos about them where I talk about them, and I go through them sometimes line by line, explaining what I don't like about them. Do you like what you do for a living? Yes, I love what I do for a living. And this is so much better than when I was working at the newspaper. It's much more rewarding and fun, and it's a... Critic jobs are dying in print everywhere, and it's hard to find, you know, and just a job that'll let you be a critic, which is what I always wanted to do, basically. What did you do before this? I was a journalist, and, uh... After that, I went back to school, but um, couldn't really find a job in this area. Oh, this is this <laughs> this has been lucky. I, I I stumbled onto this job out of pure luck, and I'm glad that I have it. It's been a real lucky break for me, and I don't know where I'd be right now without this website. I mean, I I, I met my girlfriend through this website. I uh, was able to survive. You know, this is, I, I guess SOPA affects me personally, which is why I'm going to Washington to lobby against it. Here is the ever treacherous I-95. Traffic jam, capital of the world. At the day of DC, everyone's getting there pretty early, so we had to get up at the ass crack of 10, so... <laughs> <laughs> buried deep in there is a puppy. No. It looks worse from this angle, but it's okay, trust me. She's got a little crate in there. Say something, Kali. Smile for the camera, which can't find you. We're going to stay with Pa. We like Pa. Pa's a, co Pa's a cool dude. Yeah. Not big fans of his couch, though. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice that he has one. Yeah. Um, we're about an hour out of D.C. Look at me, in D.C. Everybody, Rob also does not know how to tie a tie, much like his brother. So, Thank you, Lewis, for outing me. Yes. You're welcome. So I will demonstrate. Yes, yeah, we need fun. some like full Monty music. <laughs> no, I'm just never gonna untie the yeah, thing. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it exactly. I'm gonna show up in the <laughs> congressional <laughs> staffer's <laughs> office looking like this. He's like, hi, I represent Channel Awesome. That's our CEO. <laughs> He's a good puppy. Kali, what do you think of Sopa? There you see the sadness in his face. What's this? How you doing, Congressman? Joe Vargas from uh, <laughs> from your district. How are you going to explain this? Uh, oh, oh uh, co uh, Congressman, don't uh, look at that. 
I apologize, sir. Uh, what happened was uh, a homeless man took my shoes and replaced them with uh, these fashionable sneakers. <laughs> and uh, it turns out uh, he's homeless because of the, the SOPA bill. Right, we have to remember to be actually like dressed like we're going to meet important people. So Yeah, I forgot my dress shoes, but uh, Lindsay is going to be so kind. Yeah. To Let's get me find target. We have procured the Congress shoes. Shoes. He was going to speak in Converse shoes. <laughs> but uh, we all nixed that. And he didn't bring dress shoes, so he asked us to purchase some for him. Can you tell me a little bit about the research you've been doing? Uh, the bill itself infringes on free speech. Um, uses the same tactics that China, Iran, and North Korea currently use, and because that's the list of people we really want to be associated. Yes, with. Yes, and the MPAA pretty much admitted that. I believe it was Chris Dodd who said, "Well, if Google can censor their sites for China, why can't they do it for the U.S.? So, do we really want to use that as the benchmark for how America is going to lead in the internet industry in the future?" It's basically, it's every. 25 years this happens. This is what you call a paradigm shift, and the paradigm right. is shift. We're in the middle of it right now with the whole fossil fuel thing. At some right. point, the paradigm will shift, and we'll be off of fossil fuels. But everybody's we'll clinging it. to it because I don't know about that. Earth, you know, and most yeah. of the numbers they cite are were preposterous. 750,000 jobs cost. That's nearly something like eight percent. So of the there's no unemployed jobs right now yeah. in the recession. <laughs> were they all working for the copyright industry? And then they yeah. back off on these numbers and then apologize for it, but then you have to sit and realize, okay, well, what numbers are true? Yeah. And the FBI, the GAO, and a number of other organizations have said there's no way to verify any of this. Right. So you're rushing this legislation through on data that you can't quantify. Way too early to be in a suit. Actually, anytime is too early to be in a suit. I hate suits. I learned that I look good in a tie. But we wouldn't know. It's it's been a while. Because we can't see your face. Yeah. Trust me, I look good. Uh, we're living the dream. Have you ever spoken before Congress people before? No, I've barely spoken before anybody. I'm not used to public speaking. It's so you, like, you can't give us any advice? Um, I don't think we're supposed to call him your highness or your eminence or anything like that. That's all. That's the only advice I can give. And if you see any really bad toupees, resist the urge to yank them off. got back from meeting with lots and lots of senatorial staff and uh, house staff. Yeah. So, Paul, you were our uh, secret weapon. Secret weapon? I did very little. I just I don't, sat there I and you I looked, like the straight man? Like I looked, very, I, did, I just sit there and look very intense. I said, yes, I understand don't worry, completely Paul. what you're saying. Paul, don't worry, I did less. Well, <laughs> part of it... I just, oh, he kept getting uh, dragged along with I was going to say, apparently I was invaluable. Whatever I was doing was helping. Yeah, with, you, got, you, looked, you looked very trendy. Maybe that was it. I, I represent the, the bohemian artsy type. It's like, okay, well, here's all the suits, and this is the guy representing the artistic Yeah, you're the guy who showed up talent. without a tie. Senator Warner, the, the, the aide actually uh, admitted or came right out and, and sort of alluded to something that they've kind of been skirting around is the fact that they believe that the DMCA is not sufficient. It's not sufficient, and not only is it not sufficient, but they want it to work faster. From what I understood, the, the DCMA worked fine for what it is now. Things slipped through the crack, but of course it is. But international people can literally just go, what are you going to do about it? What was yeah. most interesting, though, is two Democratic senators, Charles Schumer and who was the, uh, the last, Al Franken, their aides, were on completely different pages about mm. the same bill. Yeah. They, what, what, what was it? Um... They, they, uh, they Sh Schumer's, said, Schumer's yeah. people was saying, yeah. Schumer's people were saying that it's all about you know they have to focus on domestic sites as well as foreign sites, otherwise the bill doesn't work and it's completely ineffective. So they just have to be careful how they write it so that people like us aren't hitting the crossfire. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Franken's people are saying 
Domestic sites won't be affected at all. Yeah. Good, bad, nothing. <laughs> it's so open-ended and the language is so vague and verbose that nobody seems to, no two people are deciphering it the same way. I would be more inclined to believe Franken's people. I mean, I wasn't in yes. the Franken meeting, but because Schumer's people, I remember this, I just re realized this, they were talking about, it was like, also we need to wor worry about counterfeit prescription drugs. And I'm like, yeah, hey, that, that, that was really revealing. Our mortal yeah, body. which, you know, if that were the case, why are the only people speaking out it for this, you know, the MPAA and the RAA, why isn't like Pfizer supporting this too? What he was saying is essentially, <laughs> you guys aren't, you people do not need to worry. We will make the right decision. Yeah. The people in power will make the right decision. Your site will never get taken down. When we brought up the thing where it's like, well, well the U.S. is going to end up having a different internet when you start to, uh, you know, delist these sites. And, you know, that's not necessarily what we want to be like yeah. China, Iran, and Egypt. And she basically justified it. Well, this isn't um, censoring free speech. This is protecting job creation. You know? Yeah. And she just left it at that. So, yes, the U.S. will have a different internet based upon this bill if these websites are, are, are some websites are delisted by this. So, I don't know. It's the same. It's, you know, it's not. It's not, uh, it's not torture, it's waterboarding. I'm just, it's about control, it's about the, these companies not wanting smaller companies like Tune, TuneCore, which releases more music in one day than any single uh, major record label in a year. They just, they don't want these, these startup companies to have that kind of control and that kind of power. Because what's a theoretical number, like 200, 250 billion dollars they supposedly lose in a... Oh, yeah. yeah. And an absolutely bullshit statistic. Nothing. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. They have no way of generating that number, like, they have no way of explaining how they even got that number. <laughs> Such a faulty data like that, yeah. that you can't even defend your own bill. You have to say, okay, stop. This this cannot pass in its current form. We need to look at this. Like, even, if it, even if they get half of the pirators out there, they're still going to do... The other half is still going to do just as much damage. I still say it's about increasing revenue more than content than content protection. I mean, who's I mean, mean this is the same. These are the same people who fought against uh, VHS, and they yeah. fought against and uh, home taping. Exactly, exactly. I mean, ideal. Um, they fought against reruns on television as well. I mean, uh, that's why any Doctor Who fan will tell you that's why there are so many missing episodes. They just refuse to uh, re to re air old episodes because the ideal. The ideal situation is that uh, you pay for a movie each time you see it, <laughs> or you, or you uh, mm -hmm. watch the ads in a TV episode every time you see it. Yeah. Um, and repeat viewings mean that you, like, if you can take something home and watch it anytime you want, that's money. That's money lost. And I guess they're just um, it, they have a history of being paranoid and paranoid, and so um, they're they're really overreacting to this. making is actually a bullshit cocktail. It's a Bronx with a little something extra. You get gin, be honest, half gin, <laughs> put a third orange juice, because it's really gin, orange juice, and then flavoring. A touch of extra dry vermouth, extra dry, tiny, tiny little bit of the sweet vermouth. And it's a Bronx with, let's say it's a Bronx with a bit of Westchester or something, I don't know. I'll drink it. <laughs> I'm Noah. <laughs> so wait, but tell me how DC went. Like, in your estimation, do you feel like the internet's voice was was heard? Like, I mean, do you, do you think there is an understanding, at least, of that this is a very important concern? I um, think, no, I think, I think the bitching was definitely heard because they had already rewritten it by the time we were there. And then, and then like, the rewrite was released that night. My, my time on Capitol Hill, I feel so much more jaded just from one day. Just from one day of being there. Like, you go in thinking, like, you know, trying not to be cynical, and then you come out like, well, I see exactly what money is influencing who, and why who votes for what bill, and... I guess I don't really blame them, because at the end of the day, we're there for the same reason, just for small potatoes. If either of these bills don't pass, and I think Keepa probably will, I, I, 
with the rewrites, I think that the, the most important thing for pe for American citizens to do is to really push on the senators to make sure the language is clear that it doesn't eliminate our due process and that it won't, you know, take down like the that guy with the glasses and the the blips and the YouTubes and the farks and the something awfuls, you know, like a website won't be blacklisted without their due process. The internet's been around for about twenty years. We had an open web but from now on, there are going to be sites that are banned in the U.S. And I guess the question is, is this going to be our... Is this is this it? Is this all they're going to go after? Or is this going to be a gateway drug? Well, are they only... Oh, I mean, are they... I feel like you start by only going after sites for a monetary reason, and then you start going after sites for a reason of, I don't like what they're saying. There, there's a misnomer out there. Like people are like, if you don't have anything to hide, then you don't have anything to worry about. And it's like, no, you know, if 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 someone throws down a DMCA on that guy with the glasses, and that has happened once, not to me, but you know, uh, it's 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 not like we won't comply. It's not an issue of whether or not we're obeying the law and we're afraid we're going to get caught. It's an issue of whether or not we'll get due process. It can't be something like someone comes in and like takes everything you have and shuts you down, and you can't even fight it. Yeah. If someone says you are copyright infringing, we can either take the offending material down or say no, it's not. We got fair use and we'll fight it, you know. Mm -hmm. We've done it before, we'll do it again. <laughs>